Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Uh, today I am throwing back to a, a request that came through uh, quite a long time ago when I started the channel. Uh, this one's from two months ago from Alex Woodruff. Uh, he requested that I check out uh, The Contortionist, especially Language One, even if I've already heard the song before. Uh, I have not. I've actually never even heard of The Contortionist before. So, uh, that's got me pretty excited. I love when you guys recommend stuff that I don't, I don't even know who they are. You know? So, uh, that's always a surprise for me. I get to find out about new music. And that's one of the cool things about doing the, these reactions. Um, so, let's get into this. We have uh, The Contortionist, Language 1. Intuition. All right. I'm not sure if that's a, a reverb effect or if he's playing all of those notes, um, but it sounds good. It has a nice. Uh, soothing harmony or soothing melody going for it and it's all dancing around a single pedal note so that's pretty cool too it feels like it's going places but it's actually sitting in a pocket basically it's, it's the, the musical idea is just sitting still Ooh, nice bass line. And a build-up that went nowhere. Good vocal harmonies. Some sort of synth going on in the background. All right. So two bars of the distorted guitar and a uh, scream in the background, and then two bars of the calm, and then just alternating that. I don't know if there's been a tempo shift, but the song definitely feels faster. I'm going to attribute that to the drummer. Those ghost notes are great. Still going with the ghost notes, just not on the roll anymore. I'm getting this real laid back, like 6 8 feel going on. But it also has a bit of a triple it feel in uh, a 4-4 four four style, so uh, I'm not really sure how it's written. But it has this feel of just dragging. A 
now we're no longer on the back beat. Now we're pushing. Got the momentum moving again. All right. That offbeat symbol is just throwing all the time in here, way off. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was good. So, uh, got a little bit of a, uh, I guess we could call it, um, prog rock um it's not really prog rock in the way that we think of like 70s prog rock with like uh pink floyd and stuff but uh it's definitely progressive rock music it feels like we're uh, you know attributing the ideas of modern prog metal into or progressive metal i get to me there's kind of a difference between progressive and prog prog is kind of like a specific kind of progressive to me um so I guess this would be like progressive rock if I were to, if I were to label it if uh, you know if that was uh, important. Um, it uses a lot of ideas of progressive metal with uh, shifting time and uh, using elements from different genres. Like we have a lot of um, pop and soft rock influences as the basis, but there is some screaming, uh, some distortion, some tapping that you would see in metal, and then you have your uh, time distortions that you would find in progressive metal. So, um, to me, I, I would say that this is a progressive soft rock or, you know, progressive rock. And, uh, it does a lot of cool things with a little bit of work. Well, a little bit of tools, I guess you could say. Um, like, just the, the main idea, if you look at the song... Uh, it doesn't really change much. The sound of the song doesn't change much. Uh, it has the same kind of feel throughout, as far as the the instrument textures, uh, the range of the guitars and the range of the vocalist. Um, the entire song sort of uses the same soundscape throughout, but it uses it. It still finds ways to differentiate each of each sections despite using very similar tools it it creates dynamics in time and feel emotion uh volume even in some cases uh sound width we had that reverb effect in the beginning i think it was reverb uh assuming that the video was showing what he was actually playing uh you know there's the, the reverb going on to fill out the sound um they were using a lot of tools to make a bigger sound and to do more things than what they had uh, to work with. And that's always really cool because um, I think I said this about yesterday's band. Um, could have been the days before. Uh, but they, these guys do a lot with a little. Uh, we, we see a lot of bands that do a lot with a lot stuff like uh, Your Night Wishes and. Uh, um, blanking out, but you know they have they have a lot of members. They have a lot of uh ideas to work with, and they can shift up the. They can have total you know shifts in style 
throughout their songs and they do a lot of cool things with a lot of tools. And then we have bands like this who still get away with doing a lot of cool things, but they have to be a little more clever about it because they don't have as many resources. Um, so I, I really love that about this band. Uh, the, one of the things that threw me off the most, cause going in, um, it sounds like a generic soft rock band. I, I wasn't really expecting much after listening to, you know, the intro in the, in the first verse, um, you know, you got your, your soothing guitar line, you got your drum that's just kind of sitting in the background and keeping the, keeping the, uh, keeping the time. You got your singer coming in with a very soft voice, and uh, dang, they just pulled the rug out from under me, because it doesn't take long for the drums to kick in and start messing with time. Um, I don't know. I think there are two time signatures. Um, the ending was definitely in 4-4, and I want to say a few other parts were in 4-4, but there were some times when I am fairly certain they shifted to uh, something like 6-8. Um, and then there are other times that I have just no clue if they were in 4-4, which is real odd accentuations or, you know, what, but, so the drummer just completely threw me for a loop. And then it, I think, I don't know if you can call it a chorus. I'm not really sure what the structure of the song was. Like I said, uh, a lot of it has uh, a, a very similar soundscape. So there weren't really like defined breaks where you would say, okay, we've shifted styles to, uh, or we've shifted sounds so that this is definitely the chorus. This is a chorusy sound. Um, you know, it never really did that. But uh, there was one section where um, the singer was singing, but there was also like a black metal fry behind him, which is very unusual. Uh, you usually don't hear fries in soft songs to begin with, but usually when you have a screamer, uh, in the production, the screaming is going to be more prominent than the singing, or they're going to be about equal. But in this one, the fry was very low in the mix. It was more about adding a distortion texture to the singing, to the clean, uh, rather than acting as a sort of harmony. So, uh, I mean, that's uh, the fact that it was present kind of threw me off. Um, but the fact that it was also so low in the mix uh, was, uh, you know, just totally unexpected. And that's kind of what this band is, totally unexpected. It, it comes in with, uh, like I said, this very soft rock, and I brought in my biases and my ideas of what the song was going to be based on what I've listened to before that matched this, and they completely went in a different direction. And, uh, you know, I love that. It, uh, they're very creative. I don't know if it was their intention to uh, basically set up this pulling the rug out idea, but it was executed very well. And, uh, you know, the guitar work was, was excellent. Uh, they have a good sense of uh, sound space and what guitars need to sound like to take up a specific type of space and to present a specific type of feeling and a texture. Uh, their reverb work was good. Uh, I love how when the distorted guitars came in, they didn't overpower. They filled the space instead. Um, it was actually very easy to not even hear them. Uh, I didn't pick up on them until maybe the fourth bar that they were in there. And that's, uh, you know, that's just real expert use of, you know, the sound, the instrument. Uh, it was not there to overpower. It was not there to make the section it was in sound punchier or metalier. It was there to fill the soundscape and to make a wider sound and give a little bit of texture to it, but not overpower. Um, and then there was a single, maybe six to eight beat uh, tapping run. And that shows a lot of restraint to have the ability to uh, play music like that, uh, to tap or to play quickly or whatever, uh, and then not do it all the time to use it when it's appropriate and to not basically showboat um that i mean that takes a lot of uh restraint and craft in composition to know when to use a skill like that and when to withhold it when it's going to help the song uh, and when it's not and to basically withhold that at the expense of uh you showing off your musicianship 
uh, for you to show off your composition. So, I mean, just all around, I, I am enamored with this band and what they're doing. Uh, I definitely need to listen to the rest of this album, or maybe even at least the rest of this song. I'm guessing by calling uh, Language One, there's more parts to it. Ooh, the bassist. Uh, I didn't really hear much of the bass throughout, um, but there were one or two sections where it was really prominent in the mix, and there was, and and it was during these beautiful runs, um, just moving through these notes that are providing an excellent bass line to the uh, chords and progression that were being played over it. Uh, real gorgeous stuff. I mean, that's gorgeous is pretty much what I would describe this song. Gorgeous and unexpected. Um, and I think I just figured out what's going on the thumbnail. All right, so that's uh, the Contortionist Language 1, Intuition. Let me know what you guys thought of this. Uh, have you heard of this band before? And if so, hit me up with some more recommendations because I need to hear more from them. This is just, this is good stuff. This is the kind of rock that I prefer to listen to. Not necessarily softer, but just, uh, you know, progressive with really interesting ideas in it. Uh, I don't care if it's soft rock or hard rock. I just, you know, something I can really sink my teeth into uh, compositionally. So, uh, and you know, while you're down there in the comments, uh, hit the like, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell all that nonsense, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. It is Friday, the last day of the week. Um, Fridays are kind of crap bags. I did see something in my uh, my YouTube front page that kind of uh, interested me. It's a, a female-led band. Uh, I'm kind of hoping somebody can request it because I'm trying to get through your requests. I kind of... I have this little thing in my mind that I shouldn't be picking up these random songs that I'm seeing that YouTube's recommended because so many of you awesome people have re recommended me songs also and I need to get to your requests uh, but then I see these cool things on YouTube and um, I really want to get to them too so I don't know we'll see maybe I'll do it uh, maybe I won't <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of the only two choices so, uh, yeah, tomorrow, Friday, grab bag, 11 a.m. as usual. And uh, until then, you all have a fantastic day.